Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a single post layout with Avada Layouts. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. I've downloaded the Caterer pre-built here, and if we go to the blog page, we can see there are a number of posts to choose from. This page has been built using postcards, displaying the various blog posts. But what we are going to look at today is the layout of the individual posts. If I open one, we can see it has a nice layout, with a page title bar under the header with a background image and text, and under that is the blog content. At the bottom there is a comment section, and a related post section, and then there's the footer. So let's look at how this is put together in Avada Layouts. Here we can see there is a layout called Single Blog Page, and this layout has both a single blog page title bar layout section and a single blog content layout section added, as well as the conditions that the layout is to be applied to all posts. So to best understand how to build a layout like this, let's delete it and build it again. So now, if I return to the post and refresh, we can see it's a very simple layout that we have little control over. With a Nevada layout, the opposite is true, in that we can completely control the design of the layout. So back in Avada Layouts, I will call the new layout single blog post and click on Create New Layout. So now we need to recreate the two layout sections. I'll click on Select Page Title Bar, and let's give the new section the name of Blog Post PTB to differentiate it from the original. Those layout sections didn't get deleted when the layout was deleted. I'll do the same for the Content section and call this Single Post Content and hit Enter. OK, so we've created our two layout sections and now we need to edit them. Let's start with the page title bar. This will be pretty simple. I just want a 1-1 container to start with a background image. So I'll go to the Background tab and the Image tab and select one from the Media Library. I'll use this one here and make sure it's going in at full size. Once the image is added, I'll set the background position to center top. And as this image is going to be at the top of the screen, I'll set Skip Lazy Loading to Yes. I'll also add a gradient above this image so on the Gradients tab, I'll add Color 8 as the Start Color, and again as the End Color, but then I'll go to the Global Color Options and reduce the opacity of this color somewhat. OK, so to force some height on this page title bar, I'm going to edit the column, and on the Design tab, add some top and bottom padding. I'll add 10 VW for each. VW stands for Vertical Width, and so this ties the padding to the width of the viewport. So on a smaller screen, the padding will be less, and it will be larger on a larger screen. And I'll just remove that bottom margin on the column. OK, now for some content. I'll add a title in here, and for the content I'll click on the Dynamic Content icon and scroll down to Page Title Bar and choose Heading. On the Design tab, I'll center it, make it a H2, and change the font color to Color 1. Under this I'll add a Post Meta element. I just want Publish Date and Categories to be enabled, so I'll drag the other ones down to the Disabled area. And on the Design tab, I'll align it to the center, set the height to 45, set the text color to color 1, and I will also remove the border by setting the border size to 0 pixels top and bottom. OK, that's it for our Page Title Bar Layout section. Let's save that and move on to the Content section. OK, so here we're going to pull the content from the blog posts. But before I do that, I'm going to add a couple of images at the top. I'll add a container with a half column, and I'll just add 50 pixels top margin to the container here and remove the bottom margin from the column. Now I will add the image element in here, and then I'll duplicate the column. For the first image, I'll edit the image element, and again using dynamic content, I will select the featured image to display here. For the second image, I will just add one manually. It's this one here I want, and I will add it at full size. OK, that's my first container. I'll just add another one, this time a 1-1 container. In this, I'll add the content element. This dynamic layout element pulls the content from the posts. If we want to see how this looks on a real post, we can go to the Layout section Options, and the Layout section tab, and view the dynamic content as a post. And I'll just select a specific post here and click Preview. That reloads, and yeah, that looks good. Now if we scroll down, we now see the content being pulled from this specific blog post. Cool. 
OK, next in this layout section, I want to add a comments section. So again, I'll add a 1-1 container and add the comments element. OK, for this example, that's good as it is. So let's add the final element. I'll just add another container, and this time I'll add the related posts element. I'll just change the number of related posts to 2, as well as the maximum columns to 2, and set the column spacing to 60. Also, I'll just change the image size to auto. Check in the option description for more info on that. OK, let's save that layout section and go back to Avada Layouts to activate this. So at the bottom of our new layout, we can see it says no conditions selected. As this is a conditional layout, we need some conditions for it to be active. And for this one, all we need to do is add a condition. And on the Posts tab, I will include the All Posts condition by selecting the tick box. This turns green, and we can see in the right column that we have now included the All Posts condition to the layout. If we wanted to, we could just select posts from specific categories, or we could exclude certain posts or categories, etc. The conditions can be as simple or as complex as you need them to be. For example, if I didn't want to use this layout on posts within the catering category, I would click the X button to exclude that category from the layout. It then gets added to the conditions in the right-hand column. I want all posts to use this particular layout, so I'll remove that exclusion. The dialog auto-saves with my changes, so we can now just close it to return to the layout. So now at the bottom of our news articles layout, we can see that it has a condition of all posts. And that's it. If we now come back to our post on the front end and refresh it, it now picks up our new layout and our blog posts look awesome. And that's just one example of how to build a single post layout using Avada Layouts. The power of this method is in its unlimited flexibility. Using the full power of the Avada Builder and conditional layouts, you can create one or several post layouts for your blog posts. OK, this concludes our video on how to build a single post layout with Avada Layouts. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.